Hiya, Helen. Oh, and Nora as well, and Sam. Hi, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. And Sarah as well. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Julie. So, I'm going to do a little bit more on here tonight. Hi, Liz. Just wait for anybody else to pop in as well. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I haven't done much more on this guy since yesterday, apart from those two. I'm just sort of planning out where I'm doing which colour. So I think what I'm going to do is finish off um, this bit of a vine thing that I started yesterday before uh, before everything. I got kicks off everywhere on Facebook. So let me just zoom in. So I'm just going to spin this guy around so that he's the right way round. Hopefully I've got this in shot for you. So back to the same colours we were using yesterday. So I'm going back with my Derwent Ink Tents and the palette for these ones is Sherbet Lemon, Mauve and Fuchsia. So I'm going to work on some more of this little guy over the rest of the week as well. But you'll be able to see what palettes I'm doing where. Helen, you just finished watching two past videos. Which ones were you watching, um, Helen? Was it this one or an old one? Right, so I'm going to try and keep an eye on the comments and crack on with the colouring. So I'm going on with mauve first. And we're finishing off. So remember, we went over with Prismacolor on this bit, which is why it looks smoother than this bit here does. So I'm going to carry on. So let's see, we want the yellow highlight on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the darkest colour down on this bottom sort of third of these leaves. The interview and the blending video. Ah, is that the interview with Emily Illustrator you were watching, Helen? So, sort of medium to firm pressure with these. As I explained to those of you that were with me yesterday over on Facebook, I'm trying to get a reasonably thick colour... Um, Colourage, that's not even a word. Thick colour lay down uh, with these ink tents on the first run so that I don't have to do a second coat. I'm going to just sort of tweak them once I've put this down with Prismacolor over the top just to smooth things out. But what I find is, although the paper is really, really good in Johanna's books, we do end up risking um, the page going a little bit wrinkly. So I'm actually just going to go for one. Um, layer of these so let's see we're coming around this way so i'm going to keep the darker edge on this side of the leaf hi roberta so i'm just going to go over all of these with this darkest color so what i'm doing on these is a three color blend and I like to work from the darkest in the palette through to the lightest. So those of you, you'll obviously be watching this on the side at the moment. This will be uploaded to YouTube later on, so you'll be able to see it the right way around. It's just a lot easier to uh, have my phone this way over on Instagram, because otherwise when I put it up on YouTube, it doesn't look quite right. There we go. Hi, Jeanette. There we go, so just carry on. So for these ones down the bottom, I'm going to do these different colours, um, even though they're attached to this bit of the vine. I just think that they should be slightly different. So the next one I'm going on with is this fuchsia. So just repeating the process, blending slightly into that mauve layer and then leaving ourselves with a little white edge for the sherbet lemon. Have I tried activating them with a blender pen? No, I haven't, Sam. I haven't. I was messing around a few minutes ago with a glass dip pen. Mixed results on that. Um, I was just seeing whether I could actually lay um, watercolour paints down with it, but it wasn't really working too well. It was a bit scratchy. Hi, Fur. But no, I haven't tried a blender pen. Um, I don't know whether with a blender pen it would maybe ruin the tip with this dry and permanent. I'm not sure how you would clean it, so I'm probably safer just using my water brushes. But what I'm gonna do is finish these few off 
get them activated and then move over to one of the other areas. So you can see I'm pushing quite hard, getting quite a thick layer of colour down onto here. I don't want to do two layers of the ink tents if I can help it. So Sherbet Lemon is the other colour in this palette. So it's only a three pencil blend on this one. And just over blend that fuchsia and then cover the last of that white area of the leaf over with this one. You can see that you get that kind of orangey tone coming through already even before you've put the water over the top. So I'm thinking this is either going to be um, metallic watercolours or it might actually be um, glittery pens, we'll see. Emily was using one the other day. Is this the blender pen or the glass pen, Jeanette, that we're talking about? Oh, there's Hannah as well. Hiya, Hannah. Yeah, the glass dip pen um, is definitely not going to be something I can use with the watercolours. It was just really scratchy on the paper. But at least we know it'll be good for the lettering. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and activate these now. So I'm using my Cavendash water brushes. As usual, this is the blue medium tip. So just need to get this uh, little guy going again. I was using it a little bit this morning. Of course, he's dried up now. Oh, the blender pen. I'll have to check that video out and see which one she was using. I wonder if it was the Derwent ones. So I'm just encouraging the water down the tip. It does take a sec or two to get these going. But once they're flowing, they're really, really good. Not quite there, nearly. In fact, I've just ordered some new um, blender pens. So I'll have a little look and check that out. So I'm just going to spin this around so that it's the light edge this way. So when you're blending these through, you're better to blend from the light side into the darkest side. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by activating that yellow layer. And then we just blend it into the fuchsia. You can just dab off any excess on a bit of paper towel. And we have this darkest bit at the bottom here. And of course, while it's still wet, you can move this pigment around. It's just when it's dried that it's permanent. You can't reactivate these. And they're very, very, very small. Anyway, so any little areas that aren't quite right, I shall just adjust them with ordinary pencils. Over the top, which I'm going to show you once these have dried up. There we go. And just do this little guy under here as well. So I did a bit more work on my tester page last night. So I've got all of the um, ink tents layer on, the leaves and everything done. So I'll be working on a palette for the branch that this guy is standing on. So we'll see what progress we make when I come on on Sunday. I'll either carry on with this for a bit longer or we will move on to some of the other areas. But I shall be using exactly the same colours that you've already seen. So just carry on activating these together. It's that yellow and that orangey pink makes a really, really pretty colour. I'm just going to squeeze this round again so that I get to these last ones. So are the ink tents different from the Castle Art watercolours? Yes, they are. They do a similar thing um, in that they are very pigmented, water soluble. Um, you can probably use the Castle Arts watercolour ones dry as well as wet, whereas I wouldn't recommend using the ink tents just dry because the colour is really, really dull. Um, but these are made of Indian ink, so with the Castle Arts watercolours you can reactivate them lots of times um, when you're moving on to another bit. With these ink tents they will just dry where they land and that will be it. So, it, yeah, they can, they're similar but different, which is probably not a lot of help really. I like both. Um, I have to admit I do like both. 
So I'm going to pick up on um, this little palette here. So I'm just going to grab the colours that I need for this one. So I want my Vivid Green. There it is. So what I'm going to do is try and look for leaves that are similar so that we tie the image together. So the ones where we've got these little lines through, I'm probably going to make these the same colour palette. So we're still using the Sherbet Lemon again, but I've also got Apple Green and Vivid Green. So it's another three colour blend and we're just going from the darkest through to the lightest again. So I'm just going to get a better point on this Vivid Green because it's gone a little bit blunt. my dull 133 sharpener that I'm using on that one. Just have a sip of my juice. I feel like I'm about 12 octaves lower than I normally am. <clears throat> okay, so on with some vivid green first of all. So I've already put the layers down on these two. These are just ready to be activated. I'm leaving the border because I'm thinking I'm going to put some glittery gel pen onto there. So what I'm going to do is just carry on from this one. So with this vivid green, because most of the base of this leaf is covered, I'm just going to give the tiniest little hint of this darkest green just around the very middle. And then the same principle as the first set, we just go from darkest through to lightest. So the apple green is the next lightest one. And we just blend that into the vivid green, leaving a bit of a white edge. And then the white edge is where we will put that lemon, not lemon, sherbet, lemon colour. I keep wanting to call it sherbet yellow, I don't know why. <laughs> keep doing that. Silly Billy. So put this sherbet lemon just around the edge and again blend that into that apple green layer. So I'm just going to hunt for similar leaves to these ones so we've actually got a couple here in the middle of him so again I'm going to carry on and pop some of that onto here as well so we've got more of the leaf showing on this one so I'm going to go down the midline either side of it and then just leave plenty of room for the other two around it as well Then back on with the apple green. But yeah, you can definitely do something similar with watercolour pencils. I think, Jeanette, you were using watercolour pencils and you've got a very similar effect. So if you don't have the ink tents or you feel more confident with watercolours, then by all means give it a go with those instead. Just bear in mind, again, if you're doing multiple layers, you will reactivate them each time you add water to them. So I prefer to do one layer of either watercolour pencil or ink tents and then tweak it over the top with some ordinary pencils. There we go. Let's just see if we've got any of these other leaves around on him. So these are similar, similar kind of leaves. Some on his tail have got the lines through. So let's grab these ones here as well. Colours are beautiful, yeah they are Nora, aren't they? They really do flash up beautiful. They look really dull when you put them down to start with and then when you hit them with water they just pop and look absolutely beautiful. So let's do the vivid green again. So go in quite far towards the bottom with this one. And then I'm just going to pull the tiniest bit of that colour up the middle line of this leaf. We'll do the same with this one as well. So I'm just going to be reusing the same, the same palettes. So there may be some of these I'm going to do with gel pen, but we'll see. That will be something that I'll decide when I've got more of uh, these first few layers down. In fact, we've got a couple here with lines through them. So while we're doing this, I might as well do these as well. So exactly the same again. Sort of 
medium pressure there just to get a decent coverage of the ink tents down. And then we'll switch over to the apple green colour. And then what I'm going to do is activate a few of these. And then we show you how we tweak them over the top with ordinary pencil. Let's just take the either side over the top of the vivid green layer. So I'm going to go all the way up the sides with this one. So just over blend everything. And then leave myself a nice white edge towards the top and that's where that lighter colour will come in. So I like to, when I'm doing a picture like this, sort of dot about. So do a little area, do another bit so that you can just see where you've got the different palettes and get the picture nice and balanced. So I sort of do little areas then, move on do other little bits and just see how it looks. That's what I did with the tree on the other page. I just kind of find it easier to uh, balance the picture when I do it like that. So Sherbet Lemon is the last of the three colours. So we just take that over the side of the leaves where we've left that white area. Blend all of that in. Like I said earlier, I know you guys are watching it on the side at the moment, but it will be up on YouTube so you can see it exactly the right way. It's just a little difficult. I'm trying to film it the other way around on here. So we're always sideways when I'm on Instagram. So just carry on down. So I'm planning what I'm going to be doing with those Castle Art Gold pencils. I'll be looking at those hopefully over the next week or so. Really looking forward to testing those and showing them to you and just making sure that we've got decent coverage over all of them. Yes, we have. So go ahead and activate these guys with some water now. So I'm going to work again from the lightest edge in, so I'm going to activate either side to get this yellow moving. The set looks awesome, yeah it does, it does look really really good. So at the moment I haven't done anything with them, they're not swatched or anything. Um, I will be doing that over the next few days. So I'm just going to pick up some of that green tint while it's still wet, we can just move that pigment around with the brush. So again, go down the lighter edge and just merge all these colours together. And then just pull everything towards the base, which is where the darkest bit will be. So the reason that I'm jumping about as well from area to area with these is if I'd coloured all these up in a row, and hadn't activated some of them. There's a chance that we could get colours running one into the other. So I would always recommend when you're using these that you work on little areas a bit at a time. Let them fully dry, because when they dry, they dry permanent. And then you can tweak anything that you need to tweak. Because there I just went over the line with the water. So if I'd have had some uh, ink tents sitting there, it would have uh, made a bit of a mess. So if I pull all these back down towards this base, which of course will be a little bit darker. And then while this is wet, I'm just going to move some of this pigment up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to do the same with these. I am going to just put them upside down though because of where I need to put my hand otherwise it's going to be in, uh, be in wet pencil which is not helpful. So I'm just going to wake up both sides of the yellow here and then just activate towards the middle where that darker green is. So it's such a tiny little space. I'll let that dry and then I will tweak it with my Prismacolor. Same with this one. And just work that back towards the darker greens in the middle. 
There we go. Ah, oh, there's Christia as well. Hi, Christia. So do the same with these ones. I think I must have coloured that in this morning. Let me just see. I don't think I've activated this one. We'll soon find out. No, I hadn't. That was well spotted. I would have noticed because they're uh, a lot sort of less vibrant when you uh, when you haven't activated them. Just work this into this little guy's leg. So I've been having a look at my um, metallic watercolors and trying to decide what colour his body is going to be, and I think it's going to be green. I feel it needs to be green. There we go. So just move a bit of that darker pigment up. Yeah, that's much better. I can't believe I missed that one. So do the same with this one. Just activate all the way around the edges. And then just bring it. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to the live. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Right, just need a wee bit more water coming out of this chap, so... Just use the little push button. There we go. Really good water flow out of these, but they do need some encouragement at times. Just sort of work that back towards the middle. And then let's do the same with the ones on his face. I'm just going to pull all of this down towards his nose. Yes, um, Nick Lula, you can. It will be available on here, but if you want to watch this the right way around, if you head over to my YouTube channel, it will be up on there a little bit later on, and then you'll be able to see it the right way around. Yeah, all barring technical issues, which I actually haven't had on here for ages. Um, I always put them on my YouTube channel because they're always sideways when I film on here. So I always prefer to have my phone in landscape rather than portrait. Because of course my, not all my Facebookers are on here and not all my Instagrammers are on Facebook. So I like to try and do a bit on both platforms so that everybody can see it live as well as watch the replays. Okay, so while that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the um, ordinary pencil bit over the top of this bit here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so Helen's tempted by the 120 pencil sets. Well, don't forget I have got that discount code with them at the moment. So if you do want them, you'll get 30% off if you use my code. Just trying to remind myself which colour. So that one, that one that one and that one okay so a little bit of Prismacolor to smooth things over the watercolour ones I think they're on offer at the moment Helen so if you use my code even if they're discounted you'll still get your 30% on top of whatever their discounted price is as well which is a pretty good deal and I have to say I really like my watercolour pencils um, I bet I'd been promising a few people that I was going to do some ink, something in ink, ink tents for quite a few weeks so I figured I'd better do it. <laughs> so with this Dahlia Purple I'm just using it to, I'm not covering the ink tents as such, I'm just using it to smooth out any areas where I'm not quite happy with the blend. They are lovely pencils says Julie. Don't start enabling people again, Julie. You know how that ends. It usually ends up in me buying things as well. <laughs> so funny. Honestly, the colouring community, we're such a bunch of enablers with people, aren't we? So, so funny. There we go. I'm just going to push that into the tip of the leaf as well, just to darken that off nicely. Noah's looking for a colouring book. What, any in particular? Are we allowed to know which one? 
Sorry, my nose has just taken this opportunity to run. Just bear with me a second. And I don't want to be sniffing in your ear, or that's not polite at all. <clears throat> so let's swizzle this round and carry on. But yeah, we are such a bunch of enablers, aren't we, with our colouring supplies? But I have to say, I am liking this discount code from Castle Arts, and I was speaking to them yesterday, and they've said to me that the code is on indefinitely um, for the time being, so that's good to know. <laughs> Luna. So I've got Luna, um, and the, the paper is, is good. It's very, very smooth. There's no tooth to it. Um, I don't know what it's like for wet medium, because I haven't tried um, wet media on it. But um, it is a really, really nice book. And Julie hasn't bought anything this week, but you're aware it's only Monday. <sighs> That's funny. I'm sure we can probably change that around before the end of the week. <laughs> so again, I'm just using this to smooth out the very darkest areas. It doesn't lose the ink tents effect, it just tidies it a little without using a second layer, which of course is really, really tricky on this paper because we don't want it to go all wrinkly. Hannah's not trying to buy anything. <laughs> oh dear. I really need to try not to buy anything. I think I've got enough colouring materials to sink a battleship at the moment. So on with Mulberry again now. So this one is just to go over where that lovely fuchsia has met that sherbet yellow or lemon or whatever it's called and turned it this really nice sort of pinky orange. This just sits really nicely over the top. It's barely using any pressure, holding the pencil on the side. So I'm just glazing the colour on rather than obliterating everything that I've already put onto here. No, says Julie. <laughs> so you've seen a flip through of the other book and the pages looked thin. What I'll do is, um, as we get towards the end, Nor, just remind me. I'll give um, Catherine a nudge and ask her to grab Luna out of the cupboard for me. And then I can show you. But I've found the paper, you know, really quite, quite okay. You can never have enough colour supplies, I know. Except for when they're taking over your living room, which mine are ridiculous. Oh, Jeanette, this safe place you've put these ink tents pencils in, I'm going to be completely intrigued to know where this safe place is because it's so safe you can't actually find them. Got me completely intrigued now. There we go. So now I'm going to use a little bit of yellowed orange. So Wonder Below 2 yellowed orange. This is just just about still comfortable to hold it really does need a pencil extender but i'm just gonna stick with i'm the same i get i put things in safe places and um can, can't remember where i put things denise has a rita berman book on the way which one is it the um the europe one the brand new one that's come in because one of my lovely followers got me that for my birthday and I have to say, it looks rather good. So definitely just need to smooth a bit of this out. You see where it's gone a little bit patchy, which is probably more about the glare I've got from the lamp rather than the, the product, but it's easier to see tonight. And then I'm just gonna create the highlight with a little bit of this lemon yellow. I think this is why I'm wanting to call the other one lemon yellow, because I'm so used to this one. Instead of sherbet lemon. It's all a bit, um, bit back to front for my tiny brain to cope with. So let's just pop a little pop of this over the edge. Just make it a bit more blingy. And plus I can just push it into those corners where I haven't quite got the water brush in as well. And then at the very end here, let's just tidy this up too. The Europe one, ah, you're a new colourist. Fab, well, welcome to the lives. Hopefully you'll find it helpful. So while we're here, 
let's tidy up this which is now perfectly dry so no I'm really really sorry no chartreuse hating please tonight <laughs> so I'm going to use some of this yellow chartreuse a little bit of spring green and I'm looking desperately at my chart to remind myself what the other one was oh yes there it is and some parrot green as well right so with this parrot green I'm only using this for the very very darkest bits so I'm just going to go up the midline of this leaf again <laughs> Nor says she's going to behave it's so funny when you put that thing on the Facebook group oh I'm not chartreuse I actually really like that colour it's grown on me <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just do these ones while I'm down here as you can see, I'm barely sort of tickling the page with this because I don't want the de-intense effect to go. So a little bit of spring green now. So I am going to tidy this up because it's just dried a little bit patchier than I would have wanted it to. So I'm going to just tidy this up a little bit down these sides. And on this one as well. It's one of the things I like about the ink tents, it just kind of goes where it wants to. And then the yellow chartreuse, which is for the highlights at the side. And this sits really, really nicely above that sherbet lemon colour. And gives a really nice pop of colour. beautiful so what we'll do is I'll swizzle this guy around and while I've got the pencils in my hand yes we're nice and dry so you can see with these ink tents they actually don't take very many minutes to dry at all but I would always recommend moving area to area so that you are not unintentionally activating bits and in fact let's do this one I nearly forgot this guy as well so I'm going to just push a bit harder down here because this would be in a bit of shadow and then let's tweak it into there as well and then back on with the spring green so you can just see where it just smooths those edges out and around the side can you do me a favour she's got her headphones on <laughs> Can you do me a favour? In that cupboard there's a book called Luna. Would you mind grabbing it for me in a little while please? Thank you. There we go. And then back on with the yellow chartreuse again. So just go around these edges. There we go. And just carry on around these we're definitely going to get some gel pen going around these I think it needs some sparkles so let's sort this little chap's nose out so again I'm going to push a bit harder um, at the base of his nose where we would have shadows and then just whip that up the midline of the leaf the same with this one just going against his mouth And then back on with the spring green so I'm just cycling exactly the same colours oh thank you Catherine's just busily hunting in the cupboard for me and then the yellow chartreuse again so I'm just making sure that I nudge this into these little corners where I haven't quite got the water brush in. There we go. Oh yes, please, thank you. Thank you, Pookie. Right, let's unzoom. So, Luna. So. Quite thick. Paper, which I'm assuming you can hear 
feels very much the same as um, Joanna's paper really. I've only done one image in here, which was this one. Lots and lots of layers of pencil on here, lots of acrylic paint pen and other bits and bobs. And it's not done anything on this side. It's not gone through. The design hasn't transferred from page to page. So um, yeah, the paper's really quite good. I'm not gonna do a whole flip through or anything because we're obviously working on the um, chameleon tonight, but it's very, very thick paper. So you should be okay. Um, I've never had any trouble with these books. I just haven't used wet media in them before. So yeah, there we go. I'll just give you a better look at him. Jeanette says my nails are looking pretty, are they? They're not painted or anything. Thanks. <laughs> There's nothing on them. <laughs> Okie dokie. I'm going to do some of this darker blue palette on here now. So um, let me just grab... Noah says thank you. Now Helen wants that book as well. Soz. <laughs> Soz, guys. Blame it on Noah. It's not my fault. <laughs> right, let me just find... I haven't got that book, says Julie. Why not? Why have you not got that book? You, you must need it. Lagoon. Where is my other blue? Move. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I have found you. I haven't got that book, she says. You should, you should get yourself that book. Right, I'm just going to have a mouthful of my drink real quick before we carry on. Flip through was amazing. I only showed you two pages now. <laughs> I can show you a quick flip. Let's do a quick flip. And it will have to be a quick flip. Because I really need to carry on with this chameleon. I just get this pot of pens out, pencils out of the way. I need to be able to buy food, says Julie. So, quick flip. Very quick flip. Ooh. Oh, I really want to do that one. Damn it, now I've got another list of uh, little pages. Oh, the flip through of Bajanista Colorista. <laughs> They're all much of a muchness. These are very sort of florally, elfy, flowery. Um, yeah, really, really nice anyway. <laughs> there we go. Happy Valentine's Day to myself. So which gel pens are my favourites? That is no contest whatsoever. These ones. Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallics. They are my favourite gel pens. Absolutely beautiful beautiful pens my absolute faves right let's just zoom back in a little bit there we go so I'm think I want this bit to be dark I think this bit needs to be blue so I'm gonna go with the dark blue leaf palette so these are the three colors green aquamarine lagoon and bright blue so let's start with the lagoon because that's the darkest. Yeah, I like it that the flowers are at the back of the book. It's really helpful because I wouldn't have a, a clue what, what they were at all. So I find it really, really helpful. So what I'm thinking is... Hmm, am I going to do all of this blue? I don't know. We'll go by, play it by ear. So let's go on with the... She says, just checking it is lagoon. I'm going to colour this along and then just feather the edge off which is where we'll blend the other colour in. Might even stick a bit of... Hmm. No, see how we go. I'm just toying with the idea of sticking a bit of that yellow on it as well but I'll turn it green so it won't quite have the right tint to it if I do that. I'm not so sure about this. I'm just going to do this bit blue to start with because I'm not sure about this one. I think that might need to be a different colour. What we'll do is I'll activate it and then decide. So a bit of bright blue next. I'm just going to slightly overblend 
that lagoon colour. And then we'll have the highlight up here. And then the green aquamarine. Look at that where I've sharpened it with the doll. You get these little corkscrew bits of pencil shavings. They're so cute. They do get all over the page and all over the desk. Yeah, I think that might need to be a different colour. I'm just going to do this one little bit at a time. And then decide from there. So what I had decided was I was going to do this underneath. Now I think that that is one in the same, one in the same bit. So what I'll do is carry on with this darker bit. So go for the darkest bit under here. I'm just going to swizz that round slowly. That's better. So more of this sort of darker blue on this underneath bit. So get that right up towards the edge of his body. under here as well. Then I'm just going to switch over to the bright blue so I don't have to keep moving the, uh, the book around. So just add a little dusting of that over the top. I'll bring this round. And I'm just going to switch over to that green aquamarine colour. And just cover over that last little bit. And then under here, I'm just going to take the bright blue. Because it's such a narrow bit of a stripe here, there really isn't room to blend three colours into one. So we're just going to go for two colours under here. And carry this on underneath this little this little leg as well there we go and then just switch back into that green aquamarine so we'd probably I don't know we'll do some more of these leaves maybe on Sunday I might do a little bit of painting um, on one of his little legs or something to show you the colour that I'm going to use and then obviously it will be up to you guys if you want to go ahead and do some of that with um, whatever mediums you choose to use. So just go ahead and activate that now. So work from here backwards, just make sure that the brush is clean so it's always when you put it down it's always a good thing to just double check that the tip is clean would have had some of that sherbet yellow lemon whatever it's called on there if I hadn't have just cleaned the tip so just make sure that you um, keep your brush super clean in between these different layers so I'm going to start at the lightest end again which is this green aquamarine colour just whisper that into the the darker colour as well and then work this backwards sort of blending as we go so this will give us a nice sort of striped effect I'm just wibbled into the next area but that's okay So 
sort of holding my breath a bit actually now. So remember if it dries patchy or it doesn't look quite right, we can correct this with the ordinary colouring pencils over the top. So just pull all of this back towards the darkest area down here. And of course I haven't coloured any of these areas around it so we're not having any bleed through or anything. I'll just pick up a bit of that excess pigment. That will do. Just see a couple of areas where I haven't quite got to the edge. There we go. Yeah, it really does, um, Helen, the second you activate it with water, it just goes... Poof. It's one of the things that I love about these ink tents. So I'm just using my finger just to get this into a nice sort of pointy end bit because this is a bit, a little bit fine up here. And whilst it doesn't matter if I wobble, I'd really rather not wobble it if I can help it. So that's that lightest colour and we're now meeting the blue. So just merge both of them together. And just carry on going backwards. Some of these other bits I may do in gel pen and which hides a multitude of sins if you wobble around. Which I really do an awful lot when I'm using these. Same again. Just activate underneath here. And if we're not quite up at the edge, we just correct that with the Prismacolor once it's dry. There we go. So I'm going to have to pop this guy upside down so just to keep my hand out of the, the wet pencil. It's the same again activate this top corner first because we're going from the lightest colour into the darkest. We just whiz that around the corner. Clean off the brush, go back to this light bit again. Activate along the top and then just integrate those blues together. Same down here, so always going from light to dark, light to dark. And of course I've coloured it deliberately dark underneath here. So let me just pull all these together. At the tip of his nose, there we go. So once that's dry, I'll correct some of that with the Prismacolor pencils. So let's have a little look which bit is going to be nice and dry. Maybe under here would be a good area to go for. So we've just got a few more minutes and then I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys for the evening. So for his body I'm going to use some of these Arteza metallic watercolours. So this is the, the empty tin. I've actually took them out of the tin. And you get, I think it's 24 colours. So these are all the metallic watercolours. And I'm thinking I'm going to do this cactus green colour, which will be a really nice um, sort of background for his body. So you can remove them from the palette, which means you can sort of move this around and put it wherever you want to put it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I think I've still got quite a bit of water actually in this cactus green. And then I have my paintbrush standing by. Hi Laura. So this is a Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolour brush. Um, it's around three. Really nice narrow little tip on it. Um, over on the book anyway so I've added some drops of water um, into this green I've got a ni nice wet brush I'm just gonna waken this 
back up again. It does go just a little bit gloopy when you've been using it and then it dries out again. You just want to get the consistency right. Don't want this all thick and, and gloopy and manky. So this is the cactus green. And then I just check this is dry. Yes, it is. I'm going to use this to uh, to do his little body with. So again, if you have little wobbles here, which I've wobbled already, um, you can just go over these lines with um, a black fine liner pen afterwards. Once you've done all of the sort of liquid side of the uh, of the painting and everything, you are going to wobble about. It really doesn't matter. just going to do this one little area of him and then those of you that have got um, metallic watercolours at home or whatever you can be cracking on with this ready for Sunday. So the gel pen bits and um, the glitter gels that I'm going to use I'm not going to do that until the end because I did that romantic country page I've just finished with the, the door um, the one that was the bakery, not the one that we did together, but the one I did myself. I did the window um, in the gel pen and then promptly dragged the glitter all over the page and had to re-go over it again. So what we will do with this guy is there will be some areas that we're going to do in um, glittery pens, but we're going to do that last because I really can't cope with... Um, finding glitter in my eyebrows, all over my face, all over the desk, all over the book, which is what happened to me last week when I was finishing that other page off. It was everywhere, and I mean everywhere. But yeah, I always wobble when I use these paints. You will find as well when you put them on, as they dry, they shrink back. So you'll see little areas where you either have gone over the line, under the line, don't matter. Um, that is the nature of the beast with these paints. Really doesn't matter. Um, I'd rather go over the line than under it, to be fair. Because it's um, it's easier to just put the line art back in again with a fine liner pen. So don't worry. I am no, no expert painter. It's just about making it look pretty. I think the glare from this lamp doesn't help either because I've got like a reflective surface so I bet when I look at this later on there's bits I've missed. So I kind of, I was, I'm in an hour in which colour I was going to do um, but I think that the green sets off all the other colours really really nicely because it's nice and neutral. There's a yellow as well that I saw and I, I liked but yeah, I preferred the green, but you can see that under the light, how beautiful that is. So all I'm doing is just reintroducing a little bit of water. I will show you this, um, this brand, Tina, one second. Let me just do this bit before it dries out. She ends up with lines otherwise. It's not attractive. So the, this brand is Arteza Metallic Watercolour, and it's a tin of 24 colours. And they are slightly different if you use them on black as opposed to white paper as well. Which is something else that I love about them. One of my lovely followers was uh, kind enough to send them. They, these were on my Amazon wish list, And she sent them to me right before Christmas. And oh, they're just so nice. Plus, it'd take ages messing around um, doing this with pencil you know doing different effects and stuff like that but I'll show you the tin in a minute Tina so you can see if you have a look I know that they stock them on Amazon you can obviously as well get them from Arteza Direct the last time I used these and my followers were going absolutely nuts for them Arteza had actually sold out on Amazon and on their own website so if they have sold out um, I did a web chat with them and what they said was the best thing to do is to go onto their website and you can stick your email address in and you get stock notifications once they're back in stock, which is well worth doing. 
why I'm just going to swizzle that brush on its side because that's just a bit of a fiddly. So this is why I was playing with my glass dip pens because I thought it might be easier around some of these fiddly bits. Um, but I'm just going to accept the fact that I am going to wobble. Just accept it and deal with it, it's fine. Because I am not a painter. Absolutely not. But I do enjoy it. But yeah, I think I think they're about 27 quid for 24 colours, which I don't think is too bad. And unlike some of the other sets, you can buy um, these half pans open stock. So if you run out, you haven't got to buy a whole new tin of paints you can actually just replace the colour which is quite good Ooh, and breathe oh I get so tense when I'm using these live on camera I would just be merrily slapping this onto the book if I was just sitting over and not live I'd just be like whit, 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 whit. no problem <laughs> don't know why I'm holding my cloth I don't need the cloth for this so I, with um, the water pen you'll see that I was using a bit of kitchen towel when I'm actually painting with proper watercolour brushes and paints. I use a little cloth to get excess water away. I'm quite glad I chose this one, it's quite a nice colour. Bit of a wibble there, it's fine, I'll correct that when it's dry with a fine liner. Let's do his little foot. Right, let me show Tina the tin. That's the tin. Arteza half pans metallic watercolours 24. Right, re-wet the brush. Just keep making sure that this is nice and opaque and not thick and gloopy and horrible. And let's finish his little hand off. I don't know if any of you have ever held a chameleon. I have. And the little hands are just as she's drawn them. They're really delightful little creatures. There we go. Very pretty, says Helen. Thank you. So if you haven't already got these paints and you're looking for another excuse to get something sparkly, I can recommend them. Quite therapeutic. When you're not holding your breath, trying to hold a conversation and paint live on air. So we've got under here a couple of little areas. So whilst I've not got very much paint on the brush, I will just tweak those in. So that will shrink back when it's dry. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'll be able to just tweak that. So let's do his other little leg. What time are we on? Eight o'clock. So yeah, the, the other um, areas of this little chap. Now I think that's part of the leaf that's on his leg. So I'm going to leave that one. Now the other areas of him, I'll probably do some more on Sunday. I wanted to show you guys how I'm going to do the background of him so that if you decide that you want to do some of it you can be cracking on with that at your leisure in whatever colour you choose to do so you could even use a glitter gel pen if you don't have these paints don't feel that you need to just go and buy these paints and um, do this this picture if you're following along with me if you're going to do a glitter gel pen though I would absolutely leave it until we are at the end of the picture Unless you want to look like somebody has poured glitter over your head and put it all over you, like I did last week. It's not attractive. I'm sure it probably is in the right circumstances, but day to day is not attractive. <laughs> there we go. That is so lovely. Look how beautiful that is under the light. So if I swizzle him round... Let's have a little look at some of these fiddly bits under here. So we've got a teeny tiny bit there. There's another teeny tiny bit in here. 
I love little projects like this where there's little bits that you can do. Much prefer this. What brand is the watercolour? Arteza. Arteza Metallic Watercolour Set. 24 half pans. Hello, little mummy. Kids get glitter everywhere. They absolutely do. I did work experience in a nursery many moons ago and used to come home looking like somebody had upchucked paint, glitter, chalk, you name it, all over me. Um, yeah, horrendous. <laughs> Absolutely horrendous. Used to get on the a bus with painted face because we'd have been doing face painting at the at the nursery and oh dear oh dear it's great fun but oh, hats off to anybody who does that for a job full time definitely so I'm just gonna squeak that down into there and let's do this wee bit as well so I'm barely touching the paint there, just getting enough. And again, where I've gone over that line art there, it doesn't matter. I will just re-add that with the black pen at the end. Always came home full of glitter and paint, yeah, I know. It was a two-week um, placement that I did um, back in the day. How old was I then? I was 17. So it was a few, good few years ago now. But yeah, goodness me. I've never bit covered myself in that much glitter. So funny. Walking glitter bomb. Oh, just holding my breath slightly because this bit's fiddly. Ooh. So this will shrink back as it dries and then I'll just re-add in that line art. So let me see. It's got other fiddly areas around this guy's tail. I'll probably do a different day. Let's finish off this bit on his back. I'm just going to re-wet my brush just because the paint is just getting a little bit thick again. There we go. And then we'll do some of these little in-betweeny bits. So I mean, you could you probably use a, a number one brush for this as well, but I quite like the number three. may actually carry on with with this this evening when I go in there uh, watch telly oh you're making the right balls up that Suzanne what are you doing so this is where fine liner pens come in very handy and ungloopy paint comes in handy let's just ungloop that oh nice to see you Nora take care Hopefully see you Sunday. That's better. So that little bit of demo there was how not to paint with uh, metallic watercolours. These very, very fiddly little bits. Ooh. There we go. That's looking a lot, lot better. And this little bit in here as well. So what I'm going to do is do the, the bigger bit first to get some of this paint off the brush. And then just tweak it in. There we go. So that is looking pretty nice. Liking that a lot. That's how we're doing for time, five past eight. Let's do, let's swizz it round and do his other leg. And then once I've done his other leg, I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys. Here I am again, this is happy, happy colour girl. Yes, here I am again. <laughs> it's a Monday thing, what can I say? <laughs> right, so I'm, I've just got the paints off to the side now. I've just added a little bit more water to them again. And then I'm going to pop my uh, hand out of the way of the bit that's already drying. And let's get this other little leg and foot done. And then once I've done this, I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys. What a lovely surprise. Thanks. Are you one of my Facebook people, Happy Colour Girl? 
can never tell sometimes because people have different profile names. I only just connected the dots with um, somebody else who's in my Facebook group and also on here and who's got completely different um, profile names. I hadn't realised all this time that she was one in the same person. So I just tweak this into this little corner. There we go. Shona. Shona East, I want to say. Is that right, Shona East? I think. That might be well that might be well remembered or it might not be well remembered, I'm not sure. So I'm just swizzling my uh, paintbrush round just to get the flat edge of that. And then tweak this. Ah, that was well remembered. I'm gonna add you to my list. So happy colour girl is shown at East. Brilliant. I've got a, a list that I keep on the desk with me when I come onto Instagram. So people that have got um, sort of funky profile names, once I know who they are, because I never remember, I'm hopeless. I have a little list. Just tweak that into there. Connect the dots now. Yeah, I know. It's bad. At least that's only taken, what, 24 hours with you? For a couple of my other regulars, it took months. If Christy or if you're still here, you can um, confirm that. Remember how many live streams it took for me to connect the dots with you? That was ridiculous. There we go. Just pull this down into here. A list. Hi, Loz. I was just talking about you a minute, Loz. I was just saying, um, so happy colour girl who you can see. I was on my live yesterday and of course you're in my um, Facebook group, aren't you? Laura. <laughs> I suddenly connected the dots together, didn't I? I think in the last 24 hours. Oh my God, that's colouring llamas. Christy is laughing. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. I think, Christy, I started the list because I could never remember... It was you and somebody else. I can't think who the other person was. I'm sure I've got Mrs. Colouring Lady on my list, have I? I haven't. Hmm. But yeah, everyone's got um, funky profile names on here. <laughs> so um, Mrs. Colour Lady, what's, what's your name? Because I'm not connecting the dots with you either. I think I gave my Facebook um, people eight minutes notice that I was coming on here tonight as well. I told everyone on Instagram, I hadn't told my Facebookers though. Which was bad. So I'm literally just finishing off this little leg and then I'm going to go mostly only on Insta. I know. Oh, Laura Jane. Right, I'm going to have to write that down before I finish. Can um, you and Shona please remind me when I say I'm about to go? to write your names down on my list. If I do it now, I'm gonna have stop start marks with the paint, which I really don't want. But I do wanna add you to my list. Yes, you did. Lovely Hannah Coles on pages. Right, let me just scooch this round slightly. Oh. Getting quite, quite tense with this now. This paint is starting to um, dry out on me, so I'm just going to get this done. Daughter sent you. Oh, that's sweet. Thanks, Laura. Happy Valentine's Day to both of you. So this is how we're all spending our Valentine's evening. You guys listening to me rabbiting on about silly things and me painting. Going for your ink tents to find what you're missing and off to... <laughs> Oh, Tina, remind me again in about three minutes when I've finished this leg and I'll add you to my list as well. I'm going to need a bigger bit of paper. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got 12 of you on there at the moment. I've got Llamas Loz, who I now know is Laura. Um, where are we? Honey44, who I know is Helen. into these little bits. I definitely think this green was the winner for this um, this little chap. Apart from the fact that I've wobbled all over the place with it, which, you know, is, is fine, I always do. I think this is going to be a good colour base for him. I may carry on with this off camera. Let's see how I feel. 
I'm going to do his other little hand and then I'm going to go, let's just do his other little hand. These are such lovely paints. Way ahead. <laughs> I'm a little bit. It's only because I'm going to paint the background and I'm not using pencil on it, that's all. It's just so much quicker and it looks really pretty as well. So we will do some more of this together anyway on Sunday. Yeah, it is. It's lovely, isn't it? These are the Arteza ones. So I'm just going to do this last little bit of his little hand. Then I'm going to get you guys to remind me of names in one second when I can grab a pen. Please anticipate the bathroom not getting cleaned. Ah, cleaning's overrated. I'd sit in colour, it's much better for your well-being. So not only will I enable you and suggest products for you to buy, it'll also distract you from your housework. Right, let's just nudge this into there. So that will all shrink back anyway as it's drying and any wobbles, we just tidy up with a fine liner afterwards. There we go. And breathe. Right, let me unzoom. So if I just flash that for you under the under the light, you can see how that's gonna make the rest of him really pop with the ink tents. So the rest of this little dude, um, his body, is going to be done in the same greens. So what I'll do is once I've coloured him in with the paint, I'll take a photograph so that you guys can see where we're going with this. Um, little areas like this can be tricky because if you wobble you kind of lose the stem. But we can add that back in again with a pen anyway. And then I'm going to come up with a colour palette for this branch um, ready for Sunday. So yeah, aren't they lovely? So that is these, which is the Arteza. So lots of lovely colours in here. So let me just get my reading glasses off so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. So Arteza metallic watercolours and super cheeky, I'm using the cactus screen. That's the cactus screen. So those of you that are wanting to follow this, obviously this way. Bear with me because it will be up on YouTube in a little while and you'll be able to view it the right way round. So I'm just going to get him out of the way. Actually, I'll leave him there. Let me grab my pen. Uh, I'll use one of these spare fine liners I've got lurking here. Why are they all not point twos? Oh, flipping it. That will just have to do. Right, remind me. So, happy colour girl. So, happy colour girl is Shona. Who was the other one? I can't remember. Tell me, tell me. Tina, remind me. Pop a comment on Tina so I can see you. Just looking at my screen. <laughs> Pop a little, um, a little comment on if you're still here, Tina. That's it, Tina Woodcock. So Tina West. It's actually Tina Woodcock. Who's the other person? There was three of you. I have to scroll back. Let me see if I can find you by scrolling back. That's probably the easiest thing instead of demanding comments. Uh, 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 uh. My God, we were having a lot, of, a lot of chat, weren't we? Keep going back. Keep going back. Mrs. Colour Lady. Laura Jane. That's it. That was the one. Mrs. M. Colour lady is Laura Jane. Fab. There we go. Sorted. And Lou Little Mummy is Louise. Let me get you on here as well. I think you told me that and um, I didn't quite get it written down quickly enough, Louise. There we go. Fab, I need to write this up neatly and or get a bigger bit of paper or a better memory. <laughs> oh dear, sorry Helen go into Amazon to order more stuff. Don't forget, you don't have to have exactly the same thing that I have done. You can do something very, very similar with gel pen. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily advocating that you have to have exactly what I've used. It really doesn't matter unless you really feel that you need these products. 
you'd be looking, if you're in the UK, you're looking at about 27 quid for them. If they're in stock, they may not be in stock. So, um, but yeah, really nice. It's the whole tin look you can use as a palette, which is quite handy. And then of course these sit really nicely in there and they're all removable. And you just nudge that over and it keeps them in place. So yeah, really cute little set. So I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys. I've gone on for a bit longer than I was planning to tonight. I want to go and get this uploaded and have a bit of R&R &R time with my lovely wife who is currently on the sofa with her headphones on and thinking I'm speaking to her, which I'm not. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm going to quit off so I'm going to spend some time with you. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> so I'll see the rest of you on Sunday. Um, I may well have done more of these leaves and things by then there aren't going to be any other color palettes in the ink tents than what you've already seen the only difference might be is some of these smaller leaves like these here i may well be doing in gel pen and if i'm doing them in gel pen i'll be doing them in these pentel ones that i always use or even the brush pens so as i make some more progress on this in the week i will upload a new photograph of him so that you can see where we are up to oh happy valentine's day they're all saying helen what? says happy valentine's day to you and your beautiful wife she is very beautiful how many years have you been my valentine now what, nearly 22 yes god you get less for see a significant crime don't you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've got to laugh. Anyway, yeah, I will see you guys um, Sunday. So enjoy the rest of your Valentine's Day wherever you are in the world. And thank you for tuning in. So I'm going to just whip you out of here. Oh, there we go. Give you a last look at this stunning paint in case you really do want to buy it. Isn't it beautiful? There we go. And enjoy the rest of your week. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now, guys.